For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had, per having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent the Theophilus, Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marvelled that he had tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them, and remained speechless. And it came to pass, that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus have the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this, this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. 
and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He hath hope in his servant, Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her, her own house. Now Elizabeth full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbours and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he could have him how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table, and wrote, saying, His name is John, and they marvelled all. <coughs> and his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised about throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all that they heard them laid, laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child did, shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that he should be saved from our enemies, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, be, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, 
in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, uh, and thou child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the, the day spring from on high have visited, visited us, to give light to them that sit in the darkness, sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good, good will toward, toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into, the, into heaven, the shepherds said unto one another, said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard wondered all, all those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all those things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And it was as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every mouth that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, 
Lord, now, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. Mine eye, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marvelled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simon blessed them, and said unto Mary and his mother, Behold, the child is set for the fall, and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may, may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven, seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of them to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. Acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down unto them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favour with God and man. And there goes, <coughs> there is, the, um, the Gospel Christmas story. Um, and I'd like to... Uh, give a few thoughts on Christmas and uh, I've been thinking about um, how do you define Christmas how, how how is it interpreted by the world and how is it interpreted and uh, individually Christians liberty uh, uh, expressed and lived on it every season um, Uh, Merry Christmas, uh, brothers and sisters, and uh, this is a a Christmas video I'm making, and I decided, I think I'll call it, uh, he called the devil's bluff, yeah, I think uh, that's what I decided, he called the, the, uh, the devil's bluff at Christmas, um, I mean, um, considering the, the so many much about the Christmas season, how I how I like it, what the things I like about it, how how I approach it, how how I view it and how I observe the world viewing the gospel and the uh, Christmas season and the the hybrid and the monster it, it it's become the commercial froth. Um so I kinda like see it as a dead policeman on a on a straight road you know, like the um straight is the gate narrow is the way 
Uh, so the Lord's uh, the, the straight gate to uh, the way of life, the way of eternal life. And he's the uh, the word, the gospel, the, the living, the living son of uh, Jehovah God, the word of God who died in the flesh to save uh, mankind, all mankind from sin, from unbelief. And he uh, was, uh, was preeminently holy and he gave his holy life, he suffered the sins of all mankind and shed his uh, precious life, his precious holy blood to redeem all from sin and death because there's no sin, there's no corruption in in God, in heaven, in a heavenly place, in the kingdom of God, in, in Jesus Christ. And the world is, um, John chapter 3 teaches that the world's under condemnation because of unbelief, because of sin, and because of not accepting the message of Christmas the Lord Jesus Christ, who is salvation, who is the living word before uh, all creation is eternal and uh, is the saviour of the world. And he got the victory over sin and death. He holds the keys over hell and death. And he, um, God, God the Father through the Lord Jesus created this world and uh, his word, his written word, expresses that, uh, that God the Father, God the Word and God the Holy Spirit fearfully and wonderfully created all things um, and considered all things before that God created them and uh, God knew that mankind would sin, so it behooved God, it's, God had to suffer coming down to die for all the mankind going wrong from, from the first and then infecting the human race with, with sin and unbelief and that uh, knowing that he's just and holy and he couldn't lower his standard and who's jealous for all to know him and be saved and for his glory to be glorified in all creation because of his son and in his and to receive his son that the, the father may be glorified in all that believe and receive a remission of sins and be saved and Jesus came Jesus was sent by the father and came voluntarily to earth he was holy and he offered his life he didn't do anything to add to the world he just um, refused the world he suffered he gave up his life he gave up himself he gave up the temptations of the world the temptations of power he was God he could have had anything he wanted on the earth but he gave everything up, wealth, esteem, uh, uh, worldly esteem, uh, worldly station, worldly power. He didn't need it because he was, he was God. He was um, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise. And he gave himself up to show his love, to show his holiness and to die, knowing he would be rejected, knowing he'd be murdered by his own people and by unbelief and he allowed himself to be betrayed by close people to him and he was his, his own people and he was handed over and unlawfully tried and executed most cruelly knowing that, it, that that would have to take place that he was willingly going to die suffering all sin, suffering all people's pain, putting off 
all the all, all the pride of life to sacrifice himself to give his holy life to spill his precious blood to save all Israel and all, all the world and, and all those that believe and receive his life and free gift and he was crucified and rose again from the grave and he's uh, eternal and he remains the same today as he was yesterday is it uh, Hebrews chapter 13 Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever so Christmas is um, today salvation is today the words eternal um, if you're born again if you're saved if you uh, have the indwelling living God in your in your in your life uh, you are saved, you are being saved and you will be saved as the Lord is, is preeminently consistent and holy and uh, his victory was, all, all, he, he already had the victory, he just expressed, showed that he was victorious or before, before the world was created and he laid his life down and took it back up. Only Jesus Christ had the power to take up his life, to lay it down and take it back up. Therefore he has the keys of hell and death, and only he has them. And only those who believe in him and trust in him receive that um, power that he holds over those, those things, hell and death, because they've received life, they've received the resurrection unto eternal life, because he's he rose from the grave unto the right hand of God, unto life, because he is life, he's the author and finisher, and he's the holy word sent from the Father, and he's on the right hand of the Father, today and forever. Second Corinthians uh, clearly expresses the eternal, eternal uh, surety of salvation in Jesus Christ and that Christmas for a believer is, is now is every day uh, Christmas is Christ and Christmas to the world is a different celebration and a different expression of people different different ideas that have morphed and uh, been corrupted and uh, tussled over and jostled and fighted and and then the secular world has um, run with it and it's become a a, 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 a scummy pot round the round the rim as it just scum around the rim of the the goodness in the in the pot. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter six. Therefore, uh, he said, if I have heard thee in the, a time accepted, and this is 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2, I'll read verse 1, we then as workers together with him beseech of you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in a, the day of salvation have I succoured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So Jesus Christ is today. Salvation is today. And, and um, I, I was thinking, well, how, how do you define Christmas? Because its, fo it's focus it is away from the complete story of the gospel that was first preached, the gospel of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ for the remission of, of, of sins solely by his um, grace by God's grace and God's merit can we be saved through faith by believing and receiving what Jesus Christ has done that we couldn't do for ourselves that by grace we are saved through faith through trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ in trusting in God the Father and his, his Son 
dying for our sins, that we may receive his life that he put off for all man, all mankind that, that believe and are born again and uh, enter into the heavenly kingdom in the Father through his appropriation, his uh, operation of his, his baptism, his death, burial into the grave and his victory, his preeminent victory over sin, death and hell, giving all the free gift of life. And that's the full gospel message that you trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to be saved. And Christmas is completely um, owned by the uh, the false owners of religion, which is uh, the state run institutional organisation like the uh, Catholic Church and all the organisations, the Protestant arm and the, uh, the so-called breakaway from the Catholic uh, dominance of church, which is um, the voice of themselves claiming to be the voice of God, saying they are the church and owning the voice of Christians to claim that they are the church authority, whereas they are liars and the Holy Word teaches that the faithful, preserved Word of God in the King James Bible, the standard, the authorised lawful standard, shows that salvation is in Jesus Christ alone and not in these organisations, in these counterfeit state-run mod models of iniquitous systems counterfeiting the gospel of Jesus Christ so I've named this uh, video he called the, the devil's bluff because Christ is is the uh, antithesis or the uh, the whole purpose of, of Christmas which is salvation and receiving salvation receiving Forgiveness of sins, only then can you know that you are saved and you are known of God and then you see that you were lost, that you couldn't see, that you were in the dark and that now you can see that you, you remain in the dark but now you have the light within the dark that you remain in until the Lord... Uh, takes you either when you die or you're restored or raptured if it, if you're on the earth during that pe period where the believing body the body of believers where the indwelling uh, Lord and the Holy Spirit uh, indwells the believer will be removed and snatched from the devil's devices trying to uh, over, uh, deceive the world into a uh, counterfeit uh, world uh, figurehead to be the head of the human race rather than rather, uh, uh, rather than the work, uh, Jesus Christ being the head of and the foundation of people's morals and uh, belief rather than unbelief which is moralless and deceitful and vain and empty and simply by expressing and knowing Jesus Christ and knowing the gospel, it, it exposes all that is not the gospel. Uh, so that's really the purpose of this video to just uh, look at a few areas of what the gospel, uh, what Christmas is about, and and the liberty of a Chris, Christian in worshiping uh, uh, Christmas and. Uh, and uh, I, I just really looking at that in my own life and how do I approach Christmas every year and um, and all the, uh, the hypocrisy of people who uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Christmas but they any other day of the week they don't they don't want to know Jesus they don't they don't love you they don't love your God but they want to wish you a Merry Christmas and you think. Uh, 
this is <laughs> it's just something you have to suffer and endure and uh, uh, I, I just over overcome and uh, I've been um, looking to be thankful for all days to be thankful for this season because it, like like I said, it, I see it like a, a dead policeman in the road. The world doesn't realise that the gospel is is now every day, and that the the world remains in condemnation and in sin. And if they die in their sin, they'll be lost forever. And that's the the wonderful news of the gospel, the wonderful news of this uh, Christmas season. There's so much I love about Christmas. I love this time of year. But even though I know it, uh, the Lord Jesus was born in springtime, his ministry, his Passover, his during springtime, his 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 resurrection and death, burial, and resurrection, and finished his finished, accomplished, fulfilled uh, prophecy of uh, dying for the sins of the world and and saving being the saviour of all, all mankind in Israel was accomplished. The prophecies were all ticked off. Uh, the old law was fulfilled. The Old Testament law was fulfilled, as we read at the beginning, preparing Israel for the coming Messiah, for the salvation and forgiveness of sins. And then when Jesus was died, the New Testament, the, the establishing of his word, his love, went forward and the Old, the old Testament was closed and the light was uh, spread to the Gentiles and, and into my life. And I, I was purchased by Jesus Christ because of the, the Christmas message, because of the gospel, the faithful word that's endured and remained true from the beginning. Um, but the church is, um, believers in the church have, uh, uh, have grown and uh, nobody's perfect and in, in uh, and today we have so much uh, hindsight and experience but imagine going through any time in the past as history as a Christian alone trying to live uh, faithful to to the gospel among all the apostasy and all the lies and all the uh, the uh, fake churches and the infiltration and imitation of uh, shields and um, to deceive the believer to uh, spy out people and control and uh, own the gospel and uh, merchandise people and get people in their nets and their baskets and on their treadmills and uh, and live in a works tithe in and get them yoked to this uh, system of uh, good works which are vain and deny the believer and the world the gospel of salvation because they are um, coveted by men to run people, to uh, lord it over people and uh, play councils and shops and um, run people's lives and manage them. Uh, but the, the gospel is uh, for every every single believer to know the Saviour and God personally and that they may um, abound in that grace they've been uh, brought to the throne, boldly purchased, that they're able to come to the throne of Jehovah God. They are in their, in their sin, as, as they were in their sinful state, they've been brought up like Moses went up to the, up to the mount and sort of saw, spoke with God. And he, uh, the Lord wanted, desired for all Israel to be brought up, they were frightened. But, we're, we're, but in my, our day and age, I've, I've I've been uh, brought up to the throne of grace and I uh, have no connection to like the, the, those times of prophets and um, priests and uh, when the Lord spoke through a prophet, I, I, he spoke through his son. I've only known Jesus Christ. I've not known uh, holy men inviting me up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. I was brought up by by the saviour himself to the throne to to worship him and to be saved and to be healed and to be corrected and to be blessed that i may be a blessing to him and to others 
and the, um, the world is completely counterfeit and opposite it expresses the um, opposite of what the gospel is and denies the the world the truth uh, I got this um, through the door it's one of those local it's from the Church of England and if you it's a, this is a sickening, if you can read that there. It says, Christ tingle services. Right, this is a sort of mentality that, and this this um, church is run by a woman, um, a silly woman who doesn't know what she's doing, doesn't believe in the gospel. I don't, I don't know what, what goes on. I really, I, it, it's beyond me to be honest. Um, Christ Tingle Services, it's a gimmick, and they, uh, I'll cover the address, they used to be, um, the Christmas cards all used to have all the local churches, all the ecumenical, Catholic-run, dominated, divisive uh, yoke, to yoke all the religious denominations together to be owned by the Catholic uh, clergy to be brought into this one world religious system and let's all hands together with bad people you know let's all let's all uh, have murderers around the kitchen table and rapists and paedophiles and let's all just um, for the sake of peace all hold hands those sort of religious idiots um, and they do the uh, Alpha Curse course, the, the so-called uh, terrible, terrible. Um, uh, it's a ten-week course. Um, you witness to this, these people. You can give them the, the gospel in um, a minute or two, or a couple, or thirty seconds, or depending that on how um, clear and. Uh, scriptural with with either scriptures or in your own words but in your own words you can define the gospel pretty quick turn or burn uh, but it's a 10-week course and you think what are they teaching these people they're, te they're just brainwashing them lying to them so what happens to these poor people so what are the damage that these uh religious systems do to the gospel like i said it's just a load of froth around the pot these you know, these things really do get up my nose at Christmas and uh, it's very sad. So that's what I think of Christ Tingle services. That really doesn't t tingle me at all. That uh, That's quite upsetting and that's offensive to the Lord. Because uh, Christmas isn't about, um, you know... Uh, giving arms to one another it, it, it's about the warning your neighbor um, and sharing the good news of salvation in your life today before you die or before it's too late or before some tragedy betakes you you don't do good works to show your go around doing good community works like these churches do to show that just to show God that they're Christians and faithful and they're not teaching the gospel and lying and uh, and um, just keeping it all amongst themselves and having these little community services and not really doing much um, except causing allowing other people to take advantage with these um, corrupt courses of the gospel which pollute the gospel they're, they're redundant and they're liars and uh, it, it really is um, so clear once it, if you trust the Lord God and you believe in Jesus Christ and you seek to trust the Lord to teach you he will reveal all, all that's rubbish all that is false um, but the only way is to be born again, and that's really the gospel message I'd like to convey. And I'm going to read uh, John chapter 3, because uh, I think that's more Christmassy. Because uh, the world, it just like, it doesn't really know it's lost, so it, 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 every moment's uh, 
urgent for every soul and it can be quite harrowing to worry worry about about these things and uh, see the world going on as it is and rejecting the, the simple truth um, I mean you hear these uh, religious people they say oh, I've had a crisis of faith and, and you get these people that are practicing and trained and they were, they've were they gone through a college and they're a, a reverend or a vicar or a deacon or whatever you know whatever the titles and labels that they stick on themselves and then they turn around publicly announcing that they've had a crisis of faith I mean a believer cannot have a crisis of faith because you when you first approach a place your faith in the, the, the true living God and you appropriate the operation he's um, completed on the cross his preeminent victory his holy life and laying down his life when you receive that you only then you, uh, your beliefs being uh, faithfully answered so only then can you continue to believe you're not going to not believe once you've received the living God. You can only go forward. You can only continue to believe. So you remain a believer. You remain. You, you may have trials of faith and you might doubt your salvation and have a fiery trial. But you will always be preeminently carried. You've got the indwelling preeminence of the Lord at that point. You appropriated atonement. So he will keep you saved he will keep you and you are um not under condemnation if you look to the singleness of the lord jesus christ his glory and continue on faithful daily and live for his spirit rather than turning turning back to the world and and unbelief and 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 the flesh but we're sinners so we we sin but if your focus is 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 single to the Lord, you confess your sins and you you remain resilient in that preeminent love, that preeminent joy and that salvation you've received and you you grow in that, that, that light and you walk daily in faith. You cannot have a crisis of faith like like these churches. And, they, and then they do the Easter parade, but really the Christmas is the uh, Christmas and Easter all... Really, it's, it, it, it's all one thing. You can't split it out across the year because it's all one gospel. There's only one gospel. There's only one word. There's only one faith. There's only one God. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And these churches are robbers and liars. So we have the uh, the word to uh, the holy the holy word received and we have the holy written word which is a faithful testimony of the living word of the holy spirit of the lord jesus christ and of god the father and his his pres preservation his faithfulness to preserve his word lawfully in writing and that is uh, the authority of all believer to measure and check everything with with that standard if you remove the king james bible from from all the Christian Bibles, there will not be a solid interpretation of what the word is. You need the standard and the, the, the authorised version. It's called the authorised version because it's authorised by a lawful king and it was done lawfully. And, he, and, um, and a, a believing king and it was done for the public's best interest. It was a, a, a lawful... In, uh, interpretation of the preserved texts of the original Gospels and the scriptures, the writings, the letters and the books, the old and the new books. And it was a preserved lawful word by the grace of God, by the divine hand of God through the weakness of man for the believer, for the final authority, for the believer to test all things and see. And you can only see once you believe, because you, if you if you don't believe, you can't see and you remain lost. So you 
you'll believe a lie, you'll believe Darwinism, you'll believe everything, because you won't see the evidence. The evidence is all about you. Creation is the evidence of God. Life is the evidence of God. Death, death is the evidence of life. Uh, life, life, uh, death doesn't have dominance over life. Death is death. Life is life. They're separate. Death is because of sin. God is not good and evil. And the and and the world presumes that um, his philosophies are right, but. Uh, and it, it sees good and evil in the world, and therefore it presumes that, that, that God the Creator is both good and evil, and he's made a mistake in creation. No, he's perfect and holy. But he knew mankind would sin, because it's created, it hasn't got a begin. it's got a beginning, it's not, it's not eternally holy. It starts with an existence, so it can't start holy, so therefore it's going to sin, so it's sinful. And it sins. So God fearfully knew this and died because he loved all his creation. He's not a, a beast. He considered all things with love and perfectly worked everything out that all would, could have the opportunity to receive life, eternal life, which is a gift from God alone. And until you receive that, you're not going to see the beauty and abundance of his life in this world wicked sinful fallen world so if you are uh, looking for hope um, the, God, the Christmas uh, message really is is beautiful it's a wonderful love story and it just takes um, belief to repent to turn away from unbelief and to receive belief to believe in life to believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved and you will have Christmas indwelling you every day. Every day will be Christmas. I'm not talking about presents and um, Christmas trees and all, all the pagan uh, trinkets. I'm, I'm talking about abundance of joy and abundance of peace, abundance of that God's spirit, God's, God's love to help you have the victory over those sins that you have in your life, those weaknesses. Those, he gives you the buffer. He's preeminently protect giving you that victory that he could only live that we couldn't that we can receive that in our lives forever even though we sin daily he's he's given us that forgiveness and that grace to um live for him not to live for sin but to live for him and uh to share his uh, glory to share his word to share his light uh, and that's the gospel message um, and uh, all, all these uh, cults like Mormonism it pulls the eye away from the cross and it focuses on uh, salvation uh, the atonement rather than the victory on the cross the finished work the free gift of salvation so it can hold that behind its back and, and make the people in it that believe it to uh, do extra things before they get the salvation that they've kept back from the people that trust them and that's what christmas is it takes your eye away from the cross easter and you're focusing on christmas trees and father christmas and the catholic church the catholic church aren't the church the Protestant church aren't the church. They just broke away and jumped on and um, jumped on the other hand. So it's the same. It's the same head, Mammon. It's the same. Um, it's just an antithesis of of Roman Catholicism, and it's the church of uh, a sinful, adulterous king, King Henry the Eighth. And, and it doesn't. It's not an expression of the of the gospel uh, that was first preached. It's it's it, it's in bed with the world. It's not separate from the world, and it doesn't teach the gospel of repentance and faith alone in, in for the remission of sins in Jesus Christ alone. It teaches a uh, a works yoked uh, ecumenical wishy washy message that anything really
goes as long as you're you're uh, serving the wishes of its uh, hierarchy, its priesthood. Uh, so that, that's gonna that's gonna go in the fire. Everything that uh, rejects the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is it, and the gospel is gonna go in, in into the fire. Uh, and that's why the Lord saved died because he doesn't he doesn't uh, rejoice in the in the, in the death of the uh, of the unbelieving people that die but he allows people to choose he gives people a freedom to choose because he doesn't want to force you to be good he doesn't want to force you to do this or do that he's jealous he's jealous for you to be loved to know his love he's jealous to give his love to all that would receive it, all his creation. He's jealous like a parent, that if, if you were a parent and your children were taken away from you and loved by a surrogate, you would be jealous to be, uh, someone else was loving your child, You'd be, your love would be jealous to be loving just solely your child and no one else to love it. God is jealous for all people to know him, he's selfless, he's, he's not a respecter of persons, he died to save sinners, he didn't die to save the holy and the whole, because he's the only holy, holy God, he died to save that which is unholy, and that's his creation, and that's his life, and that's his gift, and that's the, the gospel message, um, and the world celebrates um, Christmas, and it's like the uh, the bump in the road at, on 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 the twenty fourth of December. It, people are up <laughs> up up and down, and you, it cannot be avoided in in the Western in the Western world because it's Christmas everywhere. And uh, I wanted to uh, sh uh, just impute into the Christmas. Uh, season the uh, gospel and uh, what uh, Christ represents rather than what the world uh, portrays as the gospel of Jesus Christ and what Christians taking the voice on behalf of the believer um, which it likes to do like the politics it likes to say Oh, we sh oh, oh, let's have a referendum as it's speaking for the people. We want a referendum. Oh, the people have spoken. They want a referendum. Let's give them one. And then, and then they say, oh, oh, what about what about those poor people who voted to remain? Oh, what about those? And then, and then, the, then they speak on behalf of of the opposition. Uh, yeah, no, why do all? Oh, yeah, why don't you protest? protest in the street and you get this voice leading leading what people think and what they say and then it just plays its own politics and and people have to choose um what the, <coughs> excuse me what they portray as the people's voice they they create the arguments put them on the table as if the public have um raised the concern and that's like the uh the same voice for Christians, it, it, it claims that, uh, you know, like the Pope claims that he's the voice of, of God, he holds the authority, he's a liar, he's a criminal, um, and anyone who's associated with, with, with those are under condemnation and they're in serious trouble, and I wouldn't like to be in their shoes. Uh, John chapter 3. Now this is uh, the time of Lord, the Lord's ministry, and one of the uh, Jewish elders, uh, one of the Pharisees, uh, is seeking counsel of the Lord because he's been touched, he's been drawn to the to the Saviour. Uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound. Um, thereof, but cannot not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you that you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have a eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be approved, reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may be made manifest, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and, they, and there he tarried with them and baptised. And John also was baptising in Anon, near to Salim, uh, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptised, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom these, to that thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said that I am not the Christ but that I am sent before him. He that hath the, the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he have seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. He that have received his testimony, have set his seal that God is true. For he whom God have sent, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believe on the Son have everlasting life, and he that believe not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So Merry Christmas to the world, because the Gospel is, uh, the door is still open, and the, the, the opportunity of salvation is uh, now, is, is available, and I pray that the world will um, be drawn uh, into their minds to consider the gospel and hear the gospel and I pray for the, the free course of the work this season and, uh, and, and, and the help for uh, you know, our world, our, the way our world's going for the Lord to uh, just help us and uh, 
so that people may have the opportunity to escape the, uh, the judgments to come, the consequences of the, all this um, media indifference, of the, these devices that just create div indifference in society and, and despair. And um, all, all these, the media voice, you know, the, the lies and the, how long can they get away with the same old games, the same old spin, you know, and, and, and under the noses of, of, of just a willing or willful ignorance, people who don't want to believe, they just uh, don't want to know God. They don't want to even try to know God. They're, they're, they're condemned by their unbelief and condemning themselves. Uh, so um, I pray that the uh, world receives the gospel and uh, hears the gospel, you know, and uh, people escape the yoke of uh, organised religion and uh, the world is educated on the difference between a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian and Christi Christianity or over what the world and the media portrays as Christianity or tries to own the voice, uh, tries to divide and uh, play the uh, both sides of the argument to, you know, capture people's attention, to, cap to, to distract, to cut the head off, to then provide a remedy for the, he the headless. Um, it's a lie. You... Uh, if you're seeking hope, you just need you just need the the, the true and living head who who is God, who's who's in Jesus Christ, who's the Word of God, and uh, came in the fullness of the Godhead, and He's the head of the church. He's the shepherd and the, the author and finisher of all believers. He's the saviour of all believers and the saviour of the world. And uh, so Christmas is solely about him and not uh, giving arms to one another and uh, s filling your face. It's about a uh, sacrifice. It's about um, belief and warning and sharing the gospel. And good, the, good, the, good, the goodwill to all men is the, the hope of salvation and, and the, the fruits that come from receiving the love of God. You can't love the world and truly until you've received the love that God has expressed for the world in His Son. When you've tasted that love, then you're then then you're then you can uh, love your neighbour as yourself and love your enemy. And uh, that's the spirit and heart of Christmas is the establishing of. The of the gospel, but to establish the gospel, it's got to be received in in the person's heart. So you can't build the kingdom up by good works and efforts with the world. It has to happen within the believer's life, and the Lord is going to remove all the believers because the evil will get its way. Evil will dominate. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And um, so, how many? You know, Lord only knows how many, you know, uh, peaceful Christmases that uh, um, remain while the church remains on, on the earth and the gospel, the, uh, the, the message of salvation and uh, repentance before the, the, uh, t the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the, the judgments of the, whole, of the unbelieving world and the pouring out of a strong delusion coming forth for the Antichrist and the one world figureheads who will uh, by deceit bring all nations into bondage and uh, uh, bring about um, chaos through false peace and then wars and it's inevitable uh, the consequences of man are inevitable uh, the lies are apparent and uh, Christmas is, um, I imagine, very difficult for some people, especially people who've suffered loss, great loss at a Christmas time, a family member. And every year they've got uh, the hypocrisy of Christmas. Uh, so it's very, it can be very difficult. So um, anyone struggling in, 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 in the body, uh, it's a wonderful time to... Uh, 
reflect and uh, renew your evaluate your life and rejoice and share the gospel and uh, consider be thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel story and the uh, the gospel witness the word the faithful word uh, preached um, <clears throat> so I'd like, I think I'd like to close I'd like to wish everyone a happy Christmas I'd like to uh, close now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Maranatha.